Welcome back. It's me, and Mr. Sherwin, for another and final video of this school year on volume. So I want to go over the last formula in our textbook that has to do with volume, and we're going to be looking at volume of a sphere. So the formula that we're going to be using is volume is equal to 4 pi r cubed over 3. And r obviously being our radius, and then the 4 thirds being the multiplier that we need to use each time. So with that, we're gonna have a lot of fractions, so we're gonna to have to make sure that we sort those fractions out each time. So my first example of this, I'm just gonna kind of walk through how we deal with the fractions and how we sort it out and simplify if we can, and when we don't use fractions. So in the first one, it says, find the volume of a sphere with a radius of five inches. All right, so when I start these problems, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna just write it down into the formula as is. So I'll just start off with volume equals, we know it's four pi, and then it's five cubed, all over three. So when we go to work this out, what we're gonna to need to do is we gotta to stick to the whole please excuse my dear aunt Sally, which means we gotta take care of the cube. We've gotta cube something, which means that we've gotta raise it to the third power. So on our calculator, if we just have a basic calculator, we can just go five times five times five. So that gives me 125. And then we need to multiply that number by four. So times four gives me 500. So right now my volume sits at 500 pi and I still haven't divided by three yet. So a lot of times when I divide by three, there's not a lot of numbers that divide by three necessarily. So you have to make sure that if you do have to leave your answer in pi, that you make sure that if the answer divides by three, great, but if not, just reduce it. So when I look at this on this one, 500 does not divide by three. I know this because the digits don't divide by three, just in case you never heard of that trick. Five, zero, and zero, if you add them three digits together, five plus zero plus zero is five. Five don't divide by three, therefore 500 doesn't divide by three. So anyways, I can't reduce it, and this is an actual good answer. So if the question says leave in pi, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in pi, and I'm gonna write 500 pi over three, and then I just write over here down at the end, inches cubed so that I denoted that somebody knows that this is a measurement of volume. That's why we put these little units at the end so that we let the person know that we're, the calculations we've done represent volume, represent area or whatever. All right, well, let's say we have a situation where we do actually want to get the answer and we want to round it down to the nearest 10th, which means we want an exact answer. So in this case, I've got a volume of a, of a volleyball with a diameter of 8.4. Well, that immediately means that we need to calculate our radius, which is half, so our radius is 4.2. So we write our formula, and we go 4.2 cubed over three. So I'm gonna take, give me a second to figure that out, times 4.2, times 4.2, and I've got my answer. All right, so now when I multiply that by four, I'm right now, I'm sitting at 296.35, but I still have a pi and I haven't divided by three. So I wanna to stick to my whole, please excuse me, Darian Sally. So I've done the cube, I've done the times four, now I need to times it by pi. So 3.14, and I get 930 and a whole bunch of decimals, but all I need to do now is divide by three and I get a final answer of 310.1, and it says to the nearest 10. So I've got one eight, which means five and up, rounded up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that at 310.2. And these are measured in, I didn't bother to write it, but it was supposed to be centimeters. So centimeters cubed. All right, well, that brings me to the next problem that is most likely going to be found on any type of big standardized test, and that is the whole concept of working backwards. What if I give you the volume and I ask you to figure out the diameter? Well, anytime you have a situation like this, if it says a basketball has a volume of, you need to start with what shape is the basketball, write that formula down, and then start plugging away at it from there. So I know my formula should be 4 pi r cubed over 3. And now what I do know about this situation is that my volume is 33.5. So it's okay now for me to just erase the, third, the V 
and write 33.5. Now, the way I wanna proceed from here is I wanna go in reverse. I wanna to try to undo all the steps I took over here. So if you notice, what was the last thing I did over here was divide by three. Well, the first thing I wanna do is undo that. I wanna multiply by three. So I'm just gonna go completely in reverse. And what'll happen is when I multiply by three, this cancels this. So now getting my calculator out, 33.5 times three equals 100.5. And we are equal to four pi r cubed. We'll start dividing. Let's start by divide by four. So if I divide by four, now I'm down to 25.125 equals pi r cubed. We'll divide by pi, 3.14. Now I'm down to 8.00 equals r cubed. Well, on a Sicasio calculator like this one, if you hit shift and right above the plus minus sign is your cube sign, the cube root of eight is two. And that's because two times two times two is eight. So our radius is two, which means our diameter is four. And it was a centimeters. Four centimeters, but it must be, this must be a kid's basketball when he's a little one. All right, so we got one final question to do, and it again involves working backwards. Good comparison problem, something you see on the SAT. And it says sphere A has a radius twice that of sphere B. Sphere B has a volume of 36 pi. What's the volume of A? Well, the only way I'm gonna be able to figure this out is if I can figure out the radius of sphere B, I can figure that out doubled will give me sphere A. So I'm gonna start off with sphere B as a volume of 36 pi. So once again, like I did on the last one, and I know that it's equal to 36 pi. I wrote down my volume formula and what it's gonna to equal to. Well, first, and first step I can do is just like before, undo. The last step in solving a normal problem is to divide by three. So I'm gonna start by timesing by three. This cancels this. Now I've got four pi r cubed equals 36 times three, which is 108 pi. That's awesome because I notice I got a pi here and a pi here, which means they cancel. So now I've got four r cubed equals 108. Well, if I divide by 108, 108 by four, I got 108 divide by four brings me to 27 r cubed is equal to 27. Hit the button here, shift and right above my plus minus sign, I've got square or cube root. My radius is three. Well, if I want the answer, all I need to do now, it says sphere A is double that. So go ahead and plug it in. If I just double that, I'm gonna have a radius equal to six and I am way out of room here, but oh well, I'll figure it out. I'm gonna make a little spot here spot right here to figure this out. I'll just do it all in one step. But my new radius is gonna be six. So I'm four pi six cubed over three. So six times six times six, 216 times four, 864, and then divided by three. And I ended up with an answer of 288 pi. All right, well, I hope this helps. I hope this clarifies everything. Make sure you take your time. Always make sure that you undo fractions. That's the easiest way every single time to do these. Thank you.